The Izumo-class helicopter destroyer's second ship, the Kaga, has completed a major refit. The bow deck was changed from trapezoidal to square, and the number of landing points for fighter planes was increased from 5 to 6, which can carry 28 carrier planes of various types, including the F-35B. F-35B fighter planes can glide directly to take off with full fuel and ammunition. Japan has thus become a country with an aircraft carrier in the true sense of the word. So what are the details of this modification of the Kaga that are worthy of attention? Why did Japan choose to replace the bow shape instead of adding a ski jump ramp, as many people had previously speculated? How much will the Kaga enhance the combat capabilities of the Maritime Self-Defense Force after it enters service? On April 20, 2023, the Kaga, DDH-184, which is undergoing carrier-based conversion by the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force, completed the first stage of conversion and left Japan United Marine Corporation's maintenance dock number 4 in Kure City, Hiroshima. The Kaga is the second ship of the Izumo class and is known as a helicopter destroyer in Japanese official parlance. If you just listen to the name without looking at the size of the ship, many people will think that this ship is about the same size as the Arleigh Burke class destroyer and can park a few more helicopters at most. However, with a full load displacement of 27,000 tons, it is the largest combat ship built since the establishment of the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. This behemoth would be called at least an amphibious assault ship in other countries, but Japan modestly calls it a helicopter destroyer. Of course, to better fit the name of the destroyer, the Kaga was not built with a wide bow like the amphibious assault ships but with a trapezoidal design with narrowed sides. In addition, a phalanx close-in weapon system was installed in the position of the bow. If the Kaga is used only as a helicopter mothership, the phalanx will not interfere with landing and takeoff. But to carry VTOL fighters, the position is a big problem. However, the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force is clearly not satisfied with the Izumo class being used only as a helicopter landing platform. In the early stages of the ship's development, the Izumo class was designed to carry a large number of redundancies for fixed-wing carrier aircraft. In December 2018, the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force announced plans for the carrier-based conversion of the two Izumo class ships. On December 30th of the following year, funding related to the conversion program was budgeted for the first time in the fiscal year 2020 budget approved by the Japanese Ministry of Defense. At the time, there was speculation about how the Kaga was going to be converted into an aircraft carrier. It was mainly divided into radicals and pragmatists. In 2018, for example, the US told Japan's Ministry of Defense that General Dynamics would be happy to complete the refit program for the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force if Japan would accept US help. From the pictures the company released at the time, the US program was particularly radical. The Izumo class, with a width of less than 40 meters and a full displacement of less than 30,000 tons, was to be converted into a catapult-launched, angled deck aircraft carrier. If the Izumo class is really converted according to this plan, it will completely get rid of the helicopter carrier style and will undoubtedly significantly improve the operational capabilities of the Maritime Self-Defense Force. However, based on some details, this design by General Dynamics is still quite rough. For example, the aircraft on the drawing is the F-35C, with a maximum takeoff weight of nearly 32 tons. In addition, there are E-2CD early warning aircraft and V-22 transport aircraft. From a global perspective, only the US and French nuclear-powered aircraft carriers are equipped with fixed-wing early warning aircraft. Even the Royal Navy's 65,000-ton Queen Elizabeth-class carriers are unable to carry the E-2D. The F-35 on the front of the deck are blocking the takeoff runway. At the back end of the deck, two MV-22 are parked at one end of the landing strip. With such a design, the F-35 can neither take off nor land. And because the tonnage of the Izumo class is smaller than that of conventional aircraft carriers, the installation of catapults is basically impractical. Unless the Izumo class was built with the catapult modification in mind and the space and location were reserved, it would be impossible to complete the retrofitting work. Therefore, if the Izumo class is modified in accordance with the US proposal, I'm afraid that the construction period and cost investment would be bigger than designing a new aircraft carrier from scratch. The other speculation is relatively pragmatic, 
namely, to add a piece of ski jump ramp. Similar to the INS Vikramaditya, a ski jump ramp was put on the bow deck for taxi takeoff. This approach has been used on the British Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers. The F-35B can take off using a short takeoff and land using a vertical landing. The front of the deck can also park the carrier aircraft, to a certain extent, to achieve the best of both worlds. Therefore, this is the most mainstream speculation before the completion of the refit of the Kaga. But now that the Kaga has left the dock, this speculation has been disproved. So why didn't the Kaga have a ski jump ramp? There are various reasons, the biggest of which is probably the size and weight issue. According to a consulting report from Japan Marine Associates, Yokohama Isogo Shipyard, the weight of the entire ski jump ramp deck module is as high as 1,000 tons. And because the bow is far from the center of gravity, the moment is larger, in order not to affect the ship's navigation and maneuverability but also to add 1,000 tons of counterweight on the transom to balance. This will increase the complexity of the modification work, and the overall duration and cost are difficult to control. And if we directly add a ski jump ramp to the existing hull, it will either reduce the number of fighter landing points or make the distance between the landing points narrow, making it impossible for the fighters to operate well. In short, it is to sacrifice the efficiency of the use of warplanes, which is unacceptable to the maritime self-defense force. Another very important point is that the Izumo class needs to support the USMC's F-35B, not the Royal Navy's F-35B. At present, only the Royal Navy's F-35B are used for ski jump type takeoffs. The US Navy's amphibious assault ships all use flat deck takeoffs, and there are no pilots in the US military with experience in ski jump type takeoffs. If the Izumo class is retrofitted with a ski jump ramp, it will not be able to quickly transform into a US Marine Corps mothership in wartime. Therefore, the final choice of the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force is what you see today. So is this refit of the Kaga really just a bow change? According to available information, the Kaga removed the existing trapezoidal bow deck and installed the same right-angle bow deck as the US American-class amphibious assault ships. From the appearance, the port side deck is obviously significantly bigger than the starboard side, which is supposed to be needed to maximize the takeoff area for the left side fighters. After all, the forward elevator of the Izumo class is an inboard elevator, which is located in front of the island on the right side of the center line. The US amphibious assault ships use the outboard elevator. When F-35B fighters taxi and take off from the deck of the Izumo class carriers, they need to be offset to the left to avoid the forward elevators. This is the reason why Kaga has offset the takeoff runway to the port side. The leftward offset of the takeoff runway also increases the degree of outwardness of the flight deck. This modification has increased Kaga's usable deck area by more than 20%, significantly optimizing deck scheduling and reducing risks during takeoff while leaving the ship's maneuverability and flexibility unaffected. In addition, to enable vertical takeoff and landing of the F-35B on Kaga, a special deck material was relayed to counter the F-35B's vertical downward trailing flame. In addition, various logistical facilities dedicated to the F-35B, such as a landing guidance system, have been added. Previously, Japan also considered the option of replacing the new radar. However, after the first phase of modification was completed, the Kaga continued to use the OPS-50 phased array radar. Why not change it all at once before debuting it? I think the probability is that it is a budget issue. The Japanese government has allocated 5.2 billion yen in the 2023 defense budget for the carrier-based conversion of the Kaga as well as the Izumo. The Kaga underwent a bow-shaped refit before the Izumo. With a large amount of money already spent on the first phase of the bow replacement, the subsequent, more complete refit of the Kaga will be left to the second phase, which is expected to take place in 2026 to 2027. So could it be because of other problems? For example, key technical specifications have not been resolved, or the assembly process is too difficult to match. I think this is highly unlikely. The first is that as early as 2021, the Izumo had already completed the first stage of modification and conducted its first takeoff and landing test on October 5 of that year using two F-35B from the US Marine Corps to verify the feasibility of carrying the F-35B. Subsequently, it continued with the US Navy, 
including F-35B takeoff and landing, pilot training, shipboard ground crew training, tactical employment of carrier formations, including various operational tests and joint exercises. Therefore, there are no insurmountable difficulties in the technical specifications. Secondly, it took a very short time for Kaga to complete the first stage of the refit. The Kaga entered the dockyard in June 2022 for the refit, and by the beginning of this year, all the above-mentioned replacement work had been completed. There are not many countries in the world that can transform a helicopter destroyer into an aircraft carrier in just half a year. After all, the transformation of a ship is not like playing a game where you can upgrade your equipment at the click of a button. A conversion is a major project that will result in massive modifications to the internal structure of the ship. Since this kind of modification work is mainly done on the basis of the existing hull, the modification work often faces limitations from the built structure of the ship itself, and the actual workload is no less than building a new ship from scratch. In some countries, it is often more time-consuming to rebuild a ship than to build a new one. For example, the Russian guided missile cruiser Nasimov, which entered the dockyard for modernization in 2018, remains incomplete to this day. And that's just the modifications that don't involve a change in hull type, if it were to be converted to another ship type, the modifications would theoretically take even longer. Like the Indian Navy's Vikramaditya aircraft carrier, it took the Indian Navy $2.4 billion and 9 years to convert it from a cruiser to an aircraft carrier. As a comparison, the transformation of the Kaga was successfully completed by Japan in only 6 months. Not only was the entire hull structure modified, but the bow module was also replaced. The type of ship was also upgraded from a helicopter destroyer to a light carrier, so the assembly process was not difficult. So there is only a budget constraint. The most important question remains, how much will Kaga's transformation into a light carrier improve JMSDF's operational capability? To answer this question, we have to compare it with the pre-retrofit period. The actual usable glide takeoff distance of the Izumo class before the conversion was only about 140 meters. This distance is shorter than that of the British Elizabeth class, which also uses the F-35B. This is because, although the short takeoff runway of the Elizabeth class is even shorter, at just over 120 meters, the Elizabeth class has a ski jump ramp. In contrast, the takeoff weight of the F-35B in the Izumo class is quite limited. And after the modification, because the end of the flight deck is extended forward, the takeoff distance of the F-35B can reach about 165 meters. Actual training by the US Marine Corps has confirmed that the F-35B needs only 160 meters of runway to take off with two 900 kg JDAM bombs and two AIM-120 missiles mounted. And with a combat radius of about 800 km plus the range of the AIM-120 missiles, the JMSDF's combat formation will have an air defense area of at least 1,000 km. The JMSDF has 42 F-35B on order, which is enough to keep both Azumo-class ships fully manned and in reserve. With both Azumo-class ships fully upgraded to light carriers, the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force will have two carrier formations and will take a major step forward in operational capability. Such a formation would be sufficient to suppress non-carrier surface ship formations of any country, and with the superior combat capability of F-35B fighters, it could even counter light and even medium carrier formations. In wartime, the Kaga can also be transformed into a forward base for the US Marine Corps, increasing the number of US military aircraft in the war zone. So the Kaga's refit will not only significantly increase the strength of the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force but also enhance the deployment of US forces in the region. Well, that's all for this issue, we'll see you next time.